Welcome to this first lecture, which is, the first part of a series of lectures, presenting chapter 1 of the electric power distribution course. This first chapter is about the load characteristics. In this chapter, we'll first go through definitions of some important parameters characterizing the load. Then, we will see how we can conduct a load study, for certain applications. Finally, we will see the relationship between the load, and loss factors. In this first lecture, we will start by presenting and discussing some definitions related to load characteristics. In this lecture, we will cover the following definitions related to the load characteristics. We will first define what's a load. Then, we will define the load curve then load duration curve, then demand, then maximum demand, then average demand, then diversified or coincident demand, then maximum diversified demand, then maximum non-coincident demand, and finally, demand factor. Let's start by asking this question. What's a load? The answer to that question depends upon what type of analysis is desired. For example, the steady state analysis, or power flow study, of a transmission system, will require a different definition of load than that, used in the analysis of a secondary, in a distribution feeder. The problem is that, the load on a power system, is constantly changing. The closer you are to the customer, the more pronounced will be the ever-changing load. So, there is no such thing as a steady state load, but we rather talk about a load curve during a certain period of time. A load curve is a graphical record showing the variation of load with respect to time, which the power station has to supply. Such a curve depicting the load consumed during an hour, is called hourly load curve. A load curve depicting the load consumed in a duration of 24 hours, is called daily load curve. If the same curve displays the load consumed in a duration of one month, then it is called monthly load curve. And if the same curve displays the load consumed in a duration of one year, then it is called yearly load curve. A load profile varies according to customer type, typical examples include residential, commercial, and industrial. It also vary with seasons, because of the effect of temperature and humidity. Finally, it varies also depending on working days or holidays. Power system utilities and designers, use this information to plan their distribution system, and estimate how much electricity they will need, to make available, at any given time. Let's consider an example of a distribution system with a given load data for a given day as shown in this table. The load demand is 4000 kW from midnight to 6 am. And 2000 kW from 6 to 8 am and 6,000 kilowatts from 8 a.m. to noon time, and 2,500 kilowatts from noon to 2 p.m., and 7,500 kilowatts from 2 to 6 p.m., and 5,000 kilowatts from 6 to 8 p.m., and finally, 2,500 kilowatts from 8 p.m. to midnight. Based on the given load data, the load curve is plot, showing the load in kilowatts and its corresponding duration for a whole day, as depicted from this table. The area under the curve represents the energy, that has to be generated by the power station in a day, to meet the load demands. So the total energy, that should be generated during 24 hours, is equal to 4000 kilowatts times 6 hours plus 2000 kilowatts times 2 hours 
plus 6,000 kilowatts times 4 hours, plus 2,500 kilowatts times 2 hours, plus 8,500 kilowatts times 4 hours, plus 5,000 kilowatts times 2 hours, and plus 2,000 kilowatts times 4 hours. So, the total energy generated during the day, equals 109,000 kilowatt hour. The average load in a particular day is equal to the total energy, or area under the curve, divided by the total number of hours. In this case, it is equal to 109,000 kilowatt hour divided by 24 hours, which is equal to 4,541.7 kilowatts. The peak load during the day is 8,500 kilowatts, which occurs between 2 and 6 p.m. This represents also, the maximum demand on the power station. Load curve decides the installed capacity of the power station, and the economical sizes of the various generating units. The load curves allow also, to estimate the generating cost, and to decide the operating schedule of the power stations. To evaluate the reliability of the generating units, the load demand that persists for a particular duration should be known. For that, we need the load duration curve. A load duration curve, illustrates the variation of a certain load, in a downward form such that, the greatest load is plotted in the left, and the smallest one in the right. It is obtained by rearranging all the loads, in the load curve, in descending order, where the time axis, shows the time duration for which, each certain load continues. There are some facts about the load duration curve, that can be summarized as follows. 1. The load duration curve is, an arrangement of all load levels, in a descending order of magnitude. 2. The area under the load duration curve, represents the energy demanded or consumed, by the system. 3. Can be used in economic dispatching, system planning, and reliability evaluation. 4. It is more convenient to deal with, than the load curve. A load duration data is obtained by, rearranging the load demands in descending order, and accumulatively adding the corresponding load durations. A load duration curve is drawn from the load duration data. So, a load duration curve, is used in electric power generation, to illustrate the relationship between, generating capacity requirements, and capacity utilization. The load duration curve shows also, the capacity utilization requirements, for each increment of load. The height of each slice, is a measure of capacity, and the width of each slice, is a measure of the utilization rate or capacity factor. The product of the two is a measure of electrical energy. Load duration curve gives a clear analysis of the generating power economically. And proper selection of peak load and base load on power plants becomes easier. For our example, the peak load is 8,500 kW for a duration of 4 hours, and the base load is 2,000 kW for a duration of 24 hours. Using this load curve and load duration curve, the operation of the generating units in the power station, supplying power to the loads, is scheduled to meet the load demands. However, these curves are usually obtained by historical measurement of the load demands, at a certain existing building or area, and therefore, 
may not be available for a completely new distribution system. When designing a new distribution system for new and non-existing loads, other methods and approaches are employed to study and estimate the load characteristics, which we will need for a proper design of the power distribution system. Now, let's look at the definitions of some important parameters and factors that are very useful for the analysis of the distribution system load. We start with the demand. It is defined as the load averaged over a specific period of time. Where the load can be expressed in kilowatt, kilovolt ampere reactive, kilovolt ampere, or amperes. Demand must include also the corresponding time interval during which the load is averaged. For example, we can say that the 15-minute kilowatt demand is 100 kilowatts. Note that, the demand interval, is the period over which the load is averaged. This selected delta T period may be, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 1 hour, or even longer. Of course, there may be situations where the 15 and 30 minutes demands are identical. Next, let's define the maximum demand. It is the greatest of all demands, that occur during a specific time period. It must include, demand interval, time period, and units. For example, the 15-minute maximum kilowatt demand for the week was 100 kilowatts. This graph shows an example of a daily demand variation curve, where, the load is expressed in per unit peak. The average daily demand, is the average of the load during the 24 hours, which, in this case, is equal to 0.254 per unit. The maximum 15 minutes demand is 0.98 per unit. While the maximum 1 hour demand is 0.884, which is smaller, because recall that, the demand is the load average during the specific period of time. So the longer the time, the smaller is the average. Now, let's define the average demand. Which is, the average of the demands, over a specified period, that could be day, week, month, etc. Similarly, it must include demand interval, time period, and units. For example, the 15-minute average kilowatt demand for the month was 350 kilowatts. Note that, the difference between average demand and demand, is that the demand is the average of the load during a specific time period, while the average demand is the average of, the averaged load, over specific time intervals. Now, we will define the diversified or what is also called coincident demand. It is the sum of demands imposed by, a group or a class of loads, over a particular time period. Similarly, it must include demand interval, time period, and units. For example, these graphs show the load curves for commercial and industrial loads. So, here, the loads are grouped by class, and their sum demands are calculated and plot over 24 hours. Next, we will define the maximum diversified demand. It is the maximum of the sum of demands, imposed by a group of loads, over a particular time period. Similarly, it must include demand interval, time period, and units. For example, the 15-minute maximum diversified kilowatt demand for a week, was 500 kilowatts. Next, we will define the maximum non-coincident demand. It is defined for a group of loads, as the sum of the individual maximum demands, without any restriction that they occur at the same time. Similarly, it must include demand interval, time period, and units. For example, 
the maximum non-coincident 15-minute kilowatt demand for a week was 700 kilowatts. Now, we will define the demand factor. The demand factor is the ratio of the sum of the maximum demand of a system, or part of a system, to the total connected load on the system, or part of the system, under consideration. So, the demand factor is always less than 1. Let's consider the following example. If a residence, has equipment which would draw 6000 watts, when all equipment was drawing a full load, and draw a maximum of 3000 watts in a specified time, then, the demand factor equals 3000 watts over 6000 watts, which equals 0.5. IEC recommendations for estimating the diversified peak demand of residential building, consisting of multi-dwelling units, are as follows. For the illumination types of loads, we shall consider 50% of total connected load. For small appliance circuits, we shall consider 100% of rated load for maximum outlet wattage in the circuit plus 40% of the total connected loads of other outlets in the circuit. For fixed appliance circuits and fixed electric ranges, we shall consider 100% of rated load of largest equipment, plus 50% for rated load for the first equipment following the largest one, plus 33% for the second equipment following the largest load, plus 20% of total connected load of other equipment. For electric water heaters, we shall consider 100% of rated load of largest equipment, plus 100% for rated load for the first equipment following the largest one, plus 25% of total connected load of other equipment. Finally, for air conditioning units, we shall consider 100% of total connected load in all cases. This way of calculating the demand factor, is defined per standard, and does not depend on social category or environment. This table shows typical examples of connected loads, for a high load density apartment building, with an approximate area of 200 square meters, as categorized according to IEC standard. Here, L1 is the category of illumination and groups all lighting and general use receptacles used for desk lamp, TV, radio cassette, etc. Their respective and total ratings are provided in the third and fourth columns. L2 categorizes the small appliance circuits, which include vacuum cleaner, refrigerator small oven toaster, and kitchen machine and other small household appliances. Their respective and total ratings are provided in the third and fourth columns. L3 categorizes the fixed appliance circuits, which includes full automatic washing machine, dishwasher, oil deep frying, water heater, and ironing. Their respective and total ratings are provided in the third and fourth columns. Finally, L4 categorizes the air conditioning units. Here we have two air conditioning units, each rated 3.5 kilowatts, cold and hot. Their respective and total ratings are provided in the third and fourth columns. Note that, the water heater was considered as part of the fixed appliance circuits, and not as a separate class, as prescribed by the standard. This is because the rating of the water heater is very close to those of the L3 class equipment. Let's consider an example, and apply IEC recommendations for the connected loads of the high load density apartment building, as per the previous slide table. For L1 type of loads, which is illumination, the total load is 6000 watts. Applying the IEC recommendation for the illumination type of loads, we shall consider 50% of the total load. So, the maximum demand L1 equals 3000 watts. For L2, small appliances circuits, 
we shall consider 100% of rated load for maximum outlet wattage in the circuit plus 40% of the total connected loads of other outlets in the circuit. So we consider 100% of 1000 watts, plus 40% of the remaining loads which is 500 plus 600 plus 500 watts, resulting in L2 equals 1640 watts. For the L3 type of loads, fixed appliance circuits, we shall consider 100% of rated load of largest equipment, 2500 watts, plus 50% for rated load for the first equipment following the largest one, 2500 watts, plus 33% for the second equipment following the largest load, 2000 watts, plus 20% of total connected load of other equipment, 2000 plus 1000 watts. Thus, L3 equals 5010 watts. For the air conditioning load of type L4, we shall consider 100% of total connected load in all cases, which is 7000 watts. Thus, L4 equals 7000 watts. Therefore, the maximum demand P max, is the sum of all previously calculated demands, which is equal to 16,650 watts. The total connected load demands is 25,600 watts. Since the demand factor is the ratio of the sum of the maximum demand to the total connected load, the demand factor DF equals 16,650 over 25,600, that is 0.65. This is a very common value for residential buildings. Note that, the more the equipment, the lower the demand factor. This is the end of this lecture. Hope that it was clear and informative. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel to watch more such lectures.